Today we're looking at uh, regionalized uh, drought flow hydroplex from a mature glaciated plateau by uh, Wilfried Brutzart and uh, John Niebuhr. It's an older paper, uh, but it's a very famous paper in hydrology. A lot of people refer to it in later studies. And as they point out in the introduction, the practical importance is mainly you can predict the drought flow of rivers at a regional scale. So once the, ra the rains stop, how much longer do you have runoff in your river? Basically, the way they do that is by uh, trying to figure out what is Q as a function of time. What is the discharge as a function of time? That's what we want to know. And for that, they use the Businesky equation, and that's why we are uh, looking at this paper as well. When you look at the Businesky equation, you can uh, you often linearize the Businesky equation. If the changes in the water level are small with respect to some characteristic depth, uh, which they call PD here, then you can linearize the uh, Businesky equation. And the general solution then becomes like uh, equation two. I won't go into any details of the math, and you know, you just have to assume that uh, the people who did that uh, did it right. But you see, it's a very rel relatively uh, complicated uh, expression, and that is, it's an infinite series. But if you look at very long times, then this uh, the only the first term in this infinite series becomes important. It, it dominates all the other terms. So after a long time, this reduces just to the first term. And this is actually the same as if you would have the output from a linear reservoir. Businesk, uh, already uh, more than 100 years ago, also obtained an exact solution to the nonlinear form of this equation. Uh, we see that uh, we see that here. It's just that the depth in the adjacent uh, canal has to be zero, and then you can do this. Also, we have to uh, assume in this case that the time is also very lo fairly long, so only for longer times this solution holds. If you want to still want to stick to the nonlinear form of the Businesky equation, uh, but you want to look at, s at shorter times, then there's another solution which has been given here in equation number four that shows basically that uh, this charge goes down with the uh, square root of time. Um, and there's a constant there which is called d0, and that depends on the properties of your aquifer, like uh, drainable porosity and hydraulic conductivity, uh, depth, etc. And uh, there are different expressions for them. Some of them are shown here. But it's, imp it's important because it helps, allows us to link the parameters to physical properties of your aquifer. That's one way of going about it. So from a, let's say, a physical point of view, trying to solve the mathematics. There's also a lot of people who say, well, I will just think of it as some kind of reservoir that has some kind of response to the storage. So there's a, some constant times the storage to some exponent. And that's what the outflow is. So if you would have a linear reservoir, the outflow would be proportional to the storage, and uh, n would be 1. But n doesn't have to be 1. Now, if n is 1, we have a simple uh, solution which, uh, for the center there. We get the, so the linearized the Businesk uh, equation, and that's, that's uh, here equation a, 8. It's the same thing, except with the slightly different uh, symbols. And it's basically like emptying out of a linear reservoir. The thing is that you can also do the same, you have the same idea, but then you go for uh, the nonlinear part, and then you get this equation, which is a little bit more complicated. But you know, so if if your n is not one, but let's say two or three or whatever you want it to be, then this becomes the general uh, solution to that uh, equation. So far, we haven't seen much in terms of innovation. It's more like setting the stage based on what other people have done. Now we move to the way they are going to analyze low flow data, and that's kind of interesting. Said so they, as they say. Well, if you have a linear aquifer, then it's all easy. You just uh, you know plot on a logarithmic plot q versus t, and the slope will uh, will be a straight line, and you have everything you want. But in the case of a nonlinear reservoir, uh, it becomes more complicated because then the time at which you start becomes very important. When does the drought start? When is it really you know when there's no more drips coming from the leaves? And to overcome this, what they do is instead of looking at Q versus T, they look at DQ, DT versus Q. And that's that way you sort of eliminate the time variable T from the analysis. You don't have to worry too much about where does it start because you only look at the changes over. In a way, this is the basic differential equation if you want. And instead, normally we would start at the physics like they did in the beginning. And then you get a differential equation and that you solve. Now what we do, we're going to look at the data and we're going to determine what is the underlying differential equation in the form of 10 here. 
numerically this is how you just do that it's uh, fairly straightforward you get attracting two values and div dividing by delta t that's the derivative that is a kind of a noisy thing and that will plague us a little bit but in, it's relatively straightforward now this part is a fairly uh, information rich part because the second trick is that uh, this was the, uh, the first trick was uh, look at dq dt versus q and the second trick is that the aquifer is supposed to be the slowest responding the slowest reacting part of your watershed so anything that reacts faster will also decline faster so dq dt will go down faster for any other process be it overland runoff be it drips from leaves uh, preferential flow along routes or they are all faster so they decline faster and then so for a given q what you do is you look at the lowest value of dq dt so well that must then be most likely uh, my dq dt that comes out of the aquifer and uh, so instead of for example just a quick look at this uh, figure here instead of trying to fit a line through here they say no we take a lower envelope because for any given q the lowest value here that must be the aquifer and these faster reacting things up here where dq dt is higher so it declines faster that must also uh, cannot be the aquifer that must be some faster reacting part of the watershed then they assume sort of a form like this i mean you can make it anything of course but this makes a lot of sense dq dt equals a times q to the power b and they relate that to the previous equations that we have for these nonlinear reservoirs with b equal to 2 n minus 1 over n etc and the a we can also relate back to what we found before and that's important because that's the link later on to the actual physical properties of these aquifers when you do that we have we basically see three possibilities and we that we've seen three one is the linear reservoir for long times then b would be one with that we've got this a the second possibility is like no, we have to look at the nonlinear Boussinesque, and then B is one and a half, and this is the corresponding A. And if we have very short time for the nonlinear Boussinesque equation, then B becomes three, and this is the corresponding A. So what we do now is we plot dQ dt versus Q for different creeks in upstate New York and they did it for a number of creeks that are here and we now we go back to these figures that we already saw flying by uh, for example Fall Creek here you see the results here and then there's a lower envelope which seems to have a slope of one and a half and there might be uh, for earlier times for, don't forget it this is high Q so this is where the start of the drought is and then it goes this direction the high Q's there may even be a B equals three for Salmon Creek, it's uh, one and a half. Uh, is, is the line is here. We just drew these in and see if it, it fits more or less. Uh, Flint Creek at Phelps. No, well, we, we don't go to all. This is a kind of a nice one. Five Mile Creek. Um, we have uh, relatively many data, and you see again this this line, this one and a half line, and the B equals three line. That's what they sort of were looking for. That's the trick. Eh? You see these are log log scales. So these lines, these straight lines then become equal to the uh, exponential in your power relation between q and dq dt now they want to have they want to then analyze that say okay it looks okay is it okay uh, can we then have sensible values through these equations again to to let's say uh, drainable porosity or hydraulic conductivity and for that they have this test here and this, these, should, these points should for each creek should fall on one line this is actually to test the whole idea and they say well for most for the b equals uh, three and a half for the lower parts it should all be on this line this one line if you want and uh, it's uh, not quite they were not very happy with this point here and uh, but it's also not bad so it seems to make sense the approach similarly and the nice thing is that uh, you can relate these physical parameters back to these aquifers. You know what you measure these the A and the B in this uh, these equations. You can relate that back to some physical properties of your aquifers, and that's becoming of course very interesting. If we look the same for uh, the B equals three cases, there were only three of them, so they only have three points, and there seems to be the trend seems to be in the right direction. Of course, you cannot say much; you need more data, but at least it does not contradict what's going on. That brings us then to the uh, concluding remarks, uh, which you find here. Yeah, they sort of repeat, of course, what was been going on. They highlight some of these uh, these results. They again for uh, high flow rates, just after the drought, for this uh, environment, 
at least B equals 3 is the right exponent. So a non-linear reservoir uh, with B equals 3, not a linear reservoir. That's important. Now for longer times, we saw that many times it went a relatively robust conclusion. We look at B equals 1.5. And, and they can then relay that back through these uh, expressions for A to an ex physical expression for Q as a function of T, which was what we started out uh, wanting to do. And is just a solution to this uh, differential equation. And they uh, have things like the watershed underlain by aquifer. And they have things like uh, the aquifer area, A, and the length of the streams in that area. And that sort of, for this area, seems to be the predicting equation. So you have one equation. You can now see how much water you will have over time once the droughts set in. There's also some sanity checks then, eh, because it is, you know, these, there are physical parameters in there, so they know more or less that the hydraulic conductivity must be low. We're talking about shales here, it must be low uh, conductivity. So it, at most it's like 0.001 centimeter per second, and that means then that the, for example, that the percentage of the watershed that's actually underlain by the aquifer must be about 10 percent. So not the whole reservoir, the whole watershed contributes to this uh, drought runoff. It's uh, like 10% of the watershed, probably the area close to the streams. Then finally, they have some remarks about uh, the fact that they, you know, what is drought? Uh, so they started only looking at drought that uh, as, as defined by five days of no rain, but they have very few segments where you have these short time reactions, these B equals three reactions. So they say well, maybe we were a little bit overly critical and we can should add some of the analysis, but now for um, a few days after the rain. Now, a lot of people, like I said in the beginning, have done additional studies on that. It's often, you know, there's a lot of debate on, on what it really means, but it's the first time that we see that using this Buzineski equation, we can see that back in nature and we can actually get some very practical, regionalized conclusions with respect to the behavior of your aquifers in a certain area.